for many years now, I've been asked, how come I don't debate Rabbi Tovia Singer? Many folks know we debated in early 1992. Many others don't know we debated before that in 1991. How come we haven't debated since? Oh, I'd, I'd love to. I'm on record numerous times, numerous forums saying I, I'd love to debate him. He's an articulate counter-missionary. I'd love to debate him again, but he has refused to debate me under any circumstance. He completely cut me off many years ago. And I, I've heard from mutual friends that we both have that he's told them why they shouldn't debate me or why he won't debate me. And I said, but the story's completely bogus, 100% bogus. I don't know if he forgot completely, but anyway, I recently found out that he actually addressed this on the air. So I'm going to set the record straight, just the facts, only the facts. Here's someone that calls into a radio show where Tovia is a regular guest. Listen to the question. I watched the debate with uh, Rabbi Tovia Singer and Michael Brown uh, that they had some years back. And in that debate, I heard both of them agree that if one of them could prove that there were some rabbinical uh, commentaries that agreed that Isaiah 53 was regarding um, the Messiah, the Messiah, the, you know, the one that we've all waited, waited for, that either, you know, uh, Rabbi Singer would become a Messianic Jew or uh, mm-hmm. Michael Brown would uh, become Orthodox Jewish. And after the end of that uh, interview, um, Michael Brown said that he had provided the evidence and that it totally had refused to look at it. And I was just wondering if you could comment on that. Now, actually, Tovey responds for, I think, more than 15 minutes. He never answers the question that this fellow asked about the Isaiah 53 text. So let me just clarify that because the caller didn't have it exactly right. And by the way, we've had to debate the audio up for, for many years. Always we've had it. As long as there's been online and we had a, a website, we've had it online for everyone to listen to. We encourage everyone to listen to it. But uh, what happened was this. During the debate, I said that there were rabbinic scholars, recognized rabbinic scholars, who interpreted Isaiah 53 with regard to the suffering Messiah and applied it to the Messiah son of David. We know that some applied it to the so-called Messiah son of Joseph, but I said Messiah son of David. He said that does not exist. Now, I happened to to be researching it right before the show, so I, I knew it did exist. So we made a deal that if I could show him that text, he would become a Messianic Jew. If he could prove I was wrong, I would become an Orthodox Jew. It was, it was done in a joking way, but, but we did make that agreement. When we pointed the text out afterwards, Sid Roth moderated the debate. When I de- pointed the text out to Tovia afterwards, he came back on the air. We recorded another show where he acknowledged his error and we released him from his promise. So that, that's all out as on the air. It actually happened. But, but that's all incidental. Let's get to the real heart of the issue as Tovia begins to respond to this question. One of the things that I've not done, and almost no Christian I've engaged with has done, is do what Brown did. And that is, it it shocked me, but I mean, I, for instance, just debated Dr. Craig Evans, a really a first-class New Testament scholar and we debated in Texas at the Houston Baptist University and I wouldn't dream of coming on after the debate and and explaining why I won the debate and I'm right I just I I I never said who won the debate or he's wrong about this I don't comment on it why because the debate stands on its own and people will observe it and evaluate and make their own decision. All right, so what's the fact? That, first, I never said I won the debate. That was not the purpose of it. We agreed, and I'm going to get into this in a moment because you're going to hear some shocking misstatements. I, I just hope that Rabbi Singer forgot what actually happened. That's, that's what I'm hoping. Otherwise, he's lying through his teeth. So I, I honestly hope that he simply forgot what happened. But as long, once the debate was out, and I'll tell you exactly how that got out with our mutual agreement. We could do whatever in the world we want. In other words, he could put out a 50-tape series where he took apart everything I said and differed with it. We had every right to do that as long as the debate itself got out the way it happened. So that's, that's what happened. Subsequent to the debate, Sid Roth, who had a daily show 15 minutes a day on the radio, aside from the live call-in show where we did the debate, and this blasted all over New York, New Jersey, uh, Sid had a show 15 minutes a day where he asked me to then come on and discuss the debate afterwards and, and give background and further information. So that's what we did. 
were Jewish believers in Jesus. That's what we did. Tovia Singer, to this day, if he wanted to, he could take the debate and dissect it and give 100 points where he differed with me. Fine. More power to you. And we have another debate. Great. We can hash it out then. But that's, that's what actually happened. Now, again, it gets more and more wild as you realize how much Rabbi Singer is forgetting what actually happened or not understanding what actually happened. Back to the rabbi. Now, maybe Brown had a, his had a an agenda and that was that no matter what would happen the the normal uh the, the normal etiquette uh, was trumped by the fact that it was very important for him to prevent me from helping jews in the church return back to the jewish faith but following the debate uh, i was called on the phone I, i've never spoken about this publicly and someone says, Brown is on the radio with Sid Roth uh, discussing you, discussing the debate. And I tried calling it and I couldn't get in on the show. Yeah, you couldn't get in on the show because it was a pre-recorded show. He did not have a call-in show in those 15-minute segments. And you had previously come on. We did a segment. We recorded a segment with you so you could discuss the mistake you made about Isaiah 53. You actually came in and we recorded a, a segment. But, but listen, bottom line, you were totally free, Rabbi Singer. You were totally free to comment, do whatever you want. We had discussed this. You and I discussed these issues, in fact. And not only so, I will show students of mine debates that I've had with a gay activist, with an Orthodox rabbi, or with an agnostic professor. And then the students will discuss. They'll give feedback, and I'll give... I, don't, I never get up and say, I won this. No, no. We'll discuss the debates and, and have give and take constructively afterwards. What's wrong with that? But, but now... We get to the real heart of the matter, and I'm going to set the record straight with the facts and only the facts. So what had happened was they went on and they went into this whole discourse, and they tried to pick up all the pieces that I, 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 I've never had a conversation with them since, but they tried to pick up all the pieces that I guess they felt was missing. There were no pieces missing. To this day, I feel wonderful about the debate and want as many people to hear it as possible and would love to have another debate or a series of debates. Rabbi Singer, there is a petition that folks started online saying, uh, Michael Brown, Tobia Singer, need to debate. I signed the petition and said, yes, of course, I've been wanting to for many, many years. I posted things. I wrote to you uh, uh, privately on Facebook. I'm not a Facebook friend, but tried to reach out in, in that way because you totally cut me off, Rabbi Singer. I had no way of contacting you. You wouldn't respond to emails. You wouldn't respond to phone calls. But that was well after this incident when you said you never had a conversation with me. We talked for weeks after that. You're a late night person. I'm a late night person. Rabbi Singer, we talked for weeks. It was a long time, actually months after this event before you actually cut me off. And you cut me off as I just pressed in and continued to speak with you. But there were no pieces we had to pick up. There was m one misleading thing you said when you asked me had I read the Vilna Gaon's commentary on Daniel 9 during the debate. And it seemed odd because I'd never seen that commentary. I said, I'll have to check. And, and there were some Orthodox friends that expressed to me they were upset with you for what they felt was a cheap trick because there was no commentary there, as if you're trying to make me look bad that I hadn't read something that didn't exist. But there are no pieces to pick up. I want the whole world to listen, and I'll gladly debate you. You pick the setting, sir. Yeshiva setting, Christian setting, church setting. I'm on my radio show. You pick the moderator. You pick the format. As long as we get equal time, have at it. Let's get the truth out. I've got no pieces to pick up. I'm trying to debate. I've been trying to debate you for decades again. Back to Toby Singer. As it turns out also, the debate was edited, which means, I don't know if I ever said this publicly, but the audio that you'll hear today, if you go to the FBI and put it up, they'll tell you the audio has been edited. Rabbi Singer, you don't need to go to the FBI. You edited it. You edited it. The debate was roughly two hours long. We had to get it down to one 90-minute cassette tape. So you, Sid Roth, and I together edited the audio. We mutually agreed, okay, we took a number of phone calls. 
I remember I told you, hey, you gave a great answer to that caller, and you thought, good, you were, you were glad to see that I thought you gave a great answer to a particular caller. And we went back and forth, and we said, okay, what, what can we remove from the debate in terms of, of calls or anything that was redundant? We agree. We agreed together, sir. Rabbi Singer, you were part of the editing process. They're witnesses to this. And we shaved down what we all thought was non-essential phone calls so that we could have the best 90 minutes because it had to fit on one cassette tape. Oh, but there's more to the story, Rabbi Singer. It was videotaped. The whole thing was videotaped by a camera crew from CBN. We have multiple witnesses to all of this. Did you actually forget? When you got there, they gave you a form to sign, a release form, that it could be aired unedited on Christian TV. You said, I will sign after the debate's over. When it was over, you refused to sign. We were all disappointed and upset because they came in to film it. They were in there with us. It was filmed on videotape, and you're the one that refused to let it get out to the world. This thing is 100% the opposite, sir, of what you're saying. Can I also point out that this was the second debate that we had, that the first one we had in March of 1991 at the home of a Russian Messianic Jew in, in, the, in Montgomery County, Maryland, and that you came along with Rabbi Michael Skolbach, counter-missionary Mickey Miller, and Joanne Chinkers, who was then an Orthodox Jew, is now serving as a missionary in Nigeria. And that was also recorded. Folks had their, their tape recorders on the table. And you asked me, please do not release those to the public. And I never have. How about if we find those tapes and release them to the general public? I'm the one trying to get everything out. More with Rabbi Singer. My presumption is, is the ends justify the means. And what was very important to him was to, uh, to give his spin on the debate. If the debate, what do you need it for? If the debate stands on its own, number one, why not release the audio in its entirety? Why edit some of the things I set out? Why come on the air? I think it was for a week straight commenting on the debate. And why then attack me in books? I don't attack Rabbi Singer in books. Rabbi, 1,500 pages. I referenced some of your material. I don't attack you in books. You've been a leading counter-missionary, sir. I, I take issue with what you've written on an academic and spiritual level and factual level. So I, I interact with other counter-missionaries. You're one of them. You've been a leading counter-missionary, hence my desire to, to have another debate or a series of debates. And, and, and again, what happened to that subsequent week of interviews uh, with maybe, maybe 50, 60 minutes of content where we talked about the debate and I gave background to give further insight into the debate? What happened? We don't distribute that. We're not interested in distributing that. What we wanted to distribute was the debate. You're the one, sir, that said no to getting the video out. Otherwise, everyone could have watched that, not just listened to it, but watched it. You, sir, were part of the editing process to get it down to a 90-minute audio cassette, and you were the one that asked me not to release the audio of the previous debate that we did have. Facts, truth, and there are multiple witnesses to every point I'm making. Back to Rabbi Singer. In fact, just wrote an article in, I think it's like 30 years later, maybe it was 87, 88, took about a really a long time ago, on World Net Daily, um, uh, going on, t still bragging that he won the debate. Uh, again, uh, the dates are way off. It wasn't 87 or 88. The debate with Sid Roth was 92. But Rabbi Singer, my article was not about that debate. My article was about the previous debate that you don't even reference, the one that you asked me, do not release the tapes to the public. I put that in book four many years ago, that I'm not allowed to release the audio tapes because of an agreement I made with you. Even though you completely cut me off and have spoken falses against me since, I still kept that, my, my word to you that I wouldn't release those cassettes to, to the general public. But all I did is I tell the story of this missionary, Joanne Chinkers, doing an amazing work serving the poorest of the poor in Nigeria out of her love for Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah. And she points back to that. It was a testimony about her. All right. And in it, I explained that when people ask her, who is it that led you to Jesus? She said, Rabbi Tobia Singer, because in her view, you performed so poorly in that debate and the facts were so clearly against you. It shook her. And that was part of her journey of faith in 
Yeshua. More from Rabbi Singer. If I wanted to debate somebody, I'd write them an email, call him, I, something. I would ask. He never asked me to debate him. <laughs> okay, I've asked endlessly every way I know how, all right? I, I have, Rabbi Singer, sent you messages on, on Facebook, but again, it's going to be in another folder because I'm, I'm not a Facebook friend of yours. Others have passed on requests from me or saying, why don't you debate Dr. Brown? And they've then gotten blocked on your Facebook page. I signed a petition, a public petition saying, yes, of course, let's have a debate. Mutual acquaintances have asked you why you won't debate me, which means I have been trying to debate you. And I've said it many a time on the radio. Certainly, there are many people who listen to the radio show who would communicate you with you. If, if you had not cut me off years ago, I could easily call you or email you. You don't give me that option. So now through YouTube, I'm saying what I've said for 20 years plus. Let's have another debate or a series of debates. And let's do it live stream so everybody gets it as it's happening. More from the rabbi. One of the things I found striking is that Brown has debated other people. But those people like... Um, I don't know, Bart Ehrman or other people, well, people that he disagrees with, or James uh, White, who is a uh, reform uh, Christian, a Calvinist. He doesn't do that to them. Mm -hmm. he, do he doesn't do that to them. Uh, he debated Boteach, and he appears not to be doing it to them. Yeah, again, I will have constructive conversations after a debate. After I do a debate, I will then get on the air and play excerpts from the debate and then talk about it and people can call in. This gives more exposure to it. And yes, I did an interview with Sid Roth after the debate with Tovia. And Tovia is free to do interviews with others after. Never say who won. You don't do who won or lost. You can say others felt this or others felt that. And we'll each have those in our camp. One feeling I won, one feeling the other one won. But, but to use that as the reason to never debate me again when all the facts and all the recollections are wrong. Hey, that... I wonder, I wonder what Rabbi Singer is avoiding because I'm here ready to do the debate. And tell you what, we'll put in writing that after the debate, neither of us comment, it, uh, comment on it in any shape, size, or form. Great. And the debate just speaks for itself. Great. Wonderful. That's what I've sought to do by having his debate online for people to listen to for years. Hear it for yourselves. Last clip from Rabbi Singer. The most important thing is to stop Toby Singer to attack him so no one will listen to him. Because we can't deal with the messenger, we can't deal with the bait, stand alone, unedited, and un, um, without a commentary on it. So, but we have to stop what he's doing. So therefore, uh, he's going, he of course knows I would never meet with him for dinner, let alone debate. I, I would <laughs> never, if someone like that is absolutely radioactive so we had to know just like i am sure if i did that to any person that i've debated as a christian put out audios of the discussion of my debate without inviting the person who debated me i know i would know for sure they would never talk to me again he had to have known that but i presume he weighed the two and went okay I can have a relationship with Tovia Singh, or maybe have another debate or so on, um, but I, I won't be able to uh, respond to everything without him present, or I can attack him, not personally, not what he said, I'm, I'm uh, you know, a drug dealer, I'm saying, but I can attack him. I know that Tovia Singer will n never uh, stand on stage with him again, because um, if I did that to anybody, I know that my relationship with that person will be completely shattered. Right. So he knows that. And he, again, if he's so hungry for a debate with me, where's the phone call? Sure. And, and don't call me now. Ah, uh, Rabbi Singer, I'm looking you in the eyes as best as I can, YouTube to YouTube, 100% pure hogwash. 100% nonsense. From day one, I have wanted everyone to listen to our debate as it happened. I wanted the video to go out to the whole world. I still want the audio to go out to the whole world. How about 
we try to find the tapes from our first debate and release those. I don't have your permission to. As long as we can locate them with your permission, I will release them. And in point of fact, sir, I've never felt there was a problem with your material. You've put out stuff that's been persuasive to some. We've sought to set the record straight with more accurate interpretation of Scripture and examining things, and that's helped many to see the truth and, and turn away from what you were telling them and follow the Scriptures and follow Jesus Yeshua. I've never tried to drive you away. I've been the one trying to reach out for more than 20 years every way that I know how. Even a few days ago, I sent you another message via Facebook. Rabbi Singer, what are you hiding from? Please, the Jewish people, the general public, the Christian church, people deserve to hear from us. Let's do another debate. You set the terms, you set the location, you pick the moderator, you set it all up. As long as we have equal time, I'm in. Let's do it. I will continue to ask you as long as we have breath. 